Guess what day it is? Martini day, and I need it. I have not had a cocktail in days, days, and I'll tell you why at the end. So grab your drink and let's get into it. Hi guys, Chevy Rell here, Chevy Rell's stuff. We're in the stuff room. If you haven't been here before, what up? We talk about knitting and fiber related type things here. My name's Chevis. It's usually a shit show here. I am wearing my Swallowtail because I know someone will ask by Jamie Hoffman. It'll be linked. Shout out to Louise from Canada. Hi. I said I'd do that. So I say it all the time. Life's been crazy. It's been a minute. All the holidays and stuff type things have happened. I am going to start out with a little announcement and I'll explain why at the end. I am going to be taking a small break from podcasting. If it works out that I can, I will, but I am, really? I am swamped right now and I'll explain more as to why I'm taking the break at the end. So if you care, you can do that, but we're here for the yarny goodness, right? We are gonna start out with prizes because on the last episode, we are drawing for five winners for yarn condoms and two winners for Crystal Tea Knits pattern giveaway. I have already drawn the names and that's because I was trying to save time because like I said, I'm swamped. I will say, nope. I will say the Be Kind Fuck Off yarn condom was for sure the winner. I have already given five of these away on Instagram and I sent that one out. I'm just gonna give these at random because I don't know how else to do it to be fair. So the winners of the yarn condoms, message me your name and address and I will get them out to you in the mail. And I'm just gonna rattle off the names in a row, okay? We have Kay Weldon, Sharon Ann Barrett, Bite and Chew, like Bite and Chew, Deanna Shikoski, Shikoski, House Label Fibers. Congratulations, there's your five. You people! Send me a message with your name and address. You can message me on Instagram or Ravelry or my email. All my contact information's down below and I will get these mailed out to you. Now, the pattern, Crystal T Knits pattern. Two winners, Karen Browsard, is that how you say it? B-R-O-U-S-S-A-R-D and Patty Golden. You guys are the winners of the two patterns from Crystal T Knits. Message me and I will give you a coupon code. Tara gave us coupon codes for a pattern of your choice. So congratulations all winners. Thanks for playing along guys. Oh, and also Crystal T Knits patterns will be linked below. She has a podcast and Knitting Notions is behind making these awesome yarn condoms. She will also be linked below. So go check them out if you weren't a winner and you want a be kind off yarn cozy condom. She calls them yarn cozies. We've been over this. Okay, onto the FOs. Let me take a drink first. FO1, I finished plying the yarn that I had on my little Turkish spindle. I can't remember how many yards I got. I think it was like 60 some maybe. I don't know what it'll be. It'll just live this. Oh, I rearranged the stuff room. Check it out. Some of you saw that on Instagram. It started out with, I was just gonna tidy it up a little bit and then it turned into a full fledged thing. This basket houses all of my uh, hand spun yarn. So it'll just live in there. And then I also spun a flannel cakes bat. And look at that, isn't that awesome? And this was just a hodgepodge of stuff. 
it's two to three ounces and I again this is thick I think this was 60 some yards too but it was a heavier weight I think that might be a chunky bulky something like that she called this her boho bat and that's Tanya Caudle flannel cakes there was a bunch of different types of fiber in here and I want to ask you guys what fiber do you think this is? What sheep has like a straight, like there's no crimp in that. I'm just wondering what, what animal this came off of. It's real slick. Like it needs a high twist to grab. I just wondered if that was a sheep or what your thoughts are on that. My next FO is a fun one. And these turned out so good, you guys. I love them. They are my possessed printer mitts. Now you saw these the last time I was pretty far. I think I was almost, I was like up to the thumb on the second one. I put a thumb in. These do not have a thumb in them. I said the last time it looks like it's pulling because there's no gusset. I just put a thumb on it, but it's not pulling. It doesn't pull like when you're wearing them. So if you want to just like slack a thumb on with no gusset, it works. And this yarn is Bigfoot yarns in the Legion colorway. That's what their label looks like. Ditto. Thank you. And that's it from FOS. That's all she wrote, peeps. Oh no, I lied. I also finished a hat for Clint for Christmas. It was that effortless beanie by Patton's. I showed it the last time. I've asked him to send me a picture. We'll see if he does. Now we're on to whoops. The first whip I'm going to show you is my Melted Shrug by So Soon Knits. It looks like this. I did not put a marker where I was the last time. I have been housing it in my Just Me Grandma basket, which I absolutely love. This is not a travel outside the house knit. It's great for this. I won't go through the yarn every time. All the yarns that I'm using are linked down below. I'm still working on the back. That's the last place you saw it. Like I said, I don't remember where I was. I may have been right here, so I've gotten that much done, but I am increasing on the back and it is just brioche, 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 brioche for a lot more. I'm about halfway through, not even, just under halfway through this section. This is the right side, this is the inside, this will be the top, the neck part. I'll finish the back and then I have this side done and I'm going to do the other side right there. So this will be a while. Now I was going gangbusters on this because I want it, but I started something new and it is so addicting and that's what I've been working on. Oh, and this is a $6.55 pattern. I'm so excited about this, you guys. Okay, this is in my color, my bag from Color Morphosis. I started the Yarmulada. This is a $10, this is a $10 pattern. And this is what I am making with my Lamb Strings Halloween Advent. And I absolute, ditto, back up. And I absolutely love it. It's addicting. You know how some people are addicted to self-striping? Like they just want to get to the next stripe. Self-striping yarn does not do that to me. But this, this fade, I just want to get to the next color. Nope. I mean, you guys, I love it so much. I will tell you, Kristen, we share needles. I'm talking to you. You will hate this pattern. If you are not someone who likes purling, you will absolutely hate this pattern. I don't mind purling at all. I feel like I purl just as fast, as, maybe not just as fast, but pretty damn close to the same rate that I knit. I love it so much. Okay, so 
I'm following her fade pattern. Like she gives you a formula how to fade things. And the way my fade is coming out, because I have 20 gram minis and she does this like Wayne mathematical concoction of an equation, I am doing two and two and two and two, like everything's two rows and then like melted together. I'm still getting these stripes. I mean, you can really see it on here, but I just love it. I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to see how the colors play together at the next change. So you knit the back and then you knit two front pieces. I split my 20 gram minis in half and wound the other 10 on my Nasta pin. Um, I'll show you, hold on just a second. Okay, so this is what I'm doing. I wind two colors at a time. This is what is left. Let me spread it out for you a little bit more. This is what is left. That's what'll be next of my advent. The next time I wind yarn, I just take these two off the end and those are what I will wind. Then I put the 10 grams for the front. I wind them on my Nasta pin and I put them on this. So then they'll be all ready for me when I'm ready to knit the fronts. And I haven't totally decided how I'm gonna do that yet. I wanna knit both of them at the same time. Oops, sorry. I wanna knit both of them at the same time, but I'm gonna decide whether that it's like a bigger pain in the ass to do it that way. If it is, I'll just do one panel at a time. Um, I'm not gonna decide until I get there, but I would like, kind of like I'm a two at a time sock knitter, I would like to knit both of those at the same time. We shall see. The other thing I wanted to mention that I'm doing with this, now there'll be a lot of ends to weave in. If you don't like weaving in ends, you won't like it. Now, I'm not saying that I love purline, and I'm not saying that I love weaving in ends. All I'm saying is that I don't mind it enough to not want this finished garment. I am so excited for this finished garment. Here's what I'm doing at the end. So as I come up, I'm just making little like yarn pulls, like, like how you would start a pull ball, and then I'm safety pinning them. And the reason I'm doing that is because if for some reason I'm short with the colors on the two front panels, I'll be able to use the tails that are here. So this and the melted shrug are the two things that I mainly work on when I am at home at night, like watching TV or whatever, which hasn't happened all week and probably isn't going to for the next three months. I'll talk about that more at the end. The anticipation's killing you, isn't it? What's she up to now? I'm crazy, that's what I'm up to, crazy. Mm, I think I might want Olive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, next, it's in my bag from Sue with the flowers. I started another muscle burra, and the reason is because I just needed something that I could knit, 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 like when we went for holiday stuff. This is Scraps. Look at how that is knitting up. I need to check my gauge and part of me is wondering if I wanna rip this out. Does this not look huge? But I love how it's knitting up. It looks like um, lightning bolts or something. This is leftover Hummingbird Moon that I bought at YarnCon years ago now. And I have my little planchette progress keeper. I don't remember what I used it for. It was something where like I got, oh yes I do, my lapoof. I got into it for the end of my lapoof. So I had like quite a bit left over and I was just going to knit until whenever. I really do, especially now looking at it, I really do think I'm going to rip it out and start over. It just looks so big. Yeah, that is... Yeah, I'm gonna rip this out. So this will be frogged the next time you see it. Whatever, fail. And then my last whip, you guys. This is such a fun. Does anyone else watch Cinematic Games? 
Tammy feels my pain. We're not doing the bone. We're not doing the bone. <laughs> no bones. Not while mom's recording. Go get something soft and squishy. You guys are gonna love this story. At least the people who have seen the episode when I got stranded in the airport in Charlotte. This is in my Leela Styles VHS tape, and it has the Guardians of the Galaxy cassette on the inside. This is, well, first off, I have to tell you how it came about. So I get this message that's like, check your messages, a comment on my Instagram. And I was like, okay, well, you know how when you haven't messaged someone before on Instagram and you don't follow them, it goes to that request? Well, it was in there. So I have this message, hey, can you make me a green beret? And I was like, who are you? I didn't know who it was. He had a private profile. So I messaged him, I'm like, yeah, I can give you a quote. You know, usually like non-knitters, when they hear that, they're like, what? So we're messaging back and forth. Come to find out, it's Chris, the super cute firefighter that I got stranded in the airport with when I went to see Johnny Bo and Aquila in Maryland. He is going to the, and I mean, I haven't done any research on this and you guys will maybe tell me in the comments or I could do the research or I could ask him. Apparently, St. Patrick's Day in New York City, ditto, leave my boyfriend alone. St. Patrick's Day in New York City, apparently there is a parade Apparently there is a parade and everyone wears green berets. So of course I said yes, he's so sweet. So I started, it is the Moss Stitch Beret by Kent Turman. I'll put a picture here because I didn't print out the pattern. It's real easy. I'm just like looking at it on my phone. It's a free pattern and he wanted the Kelly Green, which they don't call it Kelly Green. I went to Simply Socks and bought, the color isn't on here. They don't put the color on their labels? Um, it's Cascade 220. I never did say that. <laughs> huh, they must not. I think this is Christmas Green, I think is what they called it. And I am this far. Here again with the purling. So it's a provisional cast on and you knit, what, three inches or whatever it is, and then you fold it back up on itself, and you knit the two together, and then you start, uh, do they call this double moss? Yes, double moss. It's the same pattern in that damn susu for you OGs, that thing. But this is just a hat, I can handle it. So I'm not very far on it, but I go for, five inches, I think, and then I start the decreases. So this will be worn in some St. Patty's Day Parade in New York. How flippin' cool is that? I mean, I never thought I'd see that dude again. I just thought, you know, he was like one of those people that you will forever have that memory of in your life. Serving friends. What? Single serving friends. Dan says they're called single serving friends. I've never heard that term. Mm. It's a Fight Club reference. I have seen Fight Club once, so I for sure would not be able to quote it. Anyway, so that's cool. Hopefully I will get a picture of Chris in this hat. I'm sure I will, I'm sure I will. The picture he sent me was just a sea of green berets, so apparently it's a thing. If any of you know about it, feel free to message me because I'm sure I'll forget to investigate. I Like, I wonder what the story is behind that. I don't know. And that's it for my whips, guys. I'd like to say that this is going to be a short episode, but I have some really cool stuff to show you. And then I'm gonna like talk about stuff at the end, which shouldn't take long, but just saying. So you know what's next is enabling, cause I gotta enable ya. The last time we spoke, I was in the middle of opening up my pretty twisted yarn advent. We have finished it. I've not decided what I'm gonna do with this yet. I'm this weirdo. <gasps> it's glorious. 
Oh my gosh, this one, this one right here. Look at it. This one, this one. There's so many. It's gonna marinate for a little bit, especially because that yarmulata is gonna take me forever to knit. So that's my first enabling. I mean, obviously you can't get the advent calendar anymore, but Teresa's dyeing skills are pretty badass. Pretty badass. If you're in to these neon-y, oh, look at this. I think this one's my favorite, actually. I mean, I love the neons, but there is something about that. Like I kind of sort of want a whole skein of that, except I don't know what I'd knit. This is a Chris, her Christmas one, I think. This reminds me of like a chocolate peppermint milkshake. Anywho, that was a lot of fun. Then, do you remember on my last episode that one of my enabling was Woolen Women's Yarn? No, Woolen Women. <laughs> Hold on. Let me take another drink. Woolen Women's Fibers. I bought a skinny yarn and I was like, I might have to get another one. Well, guess what I did? I got another one. This is Sky Rat because I want a shawl. So now this is my second skein of Sky Rat. And I'm thinking. I also rearranged all my yarn, like in my cubbies. So this, I never talk about this, like my stash. I, re I know, I really do need to do a, a stuff room tour. Maybe that's what I'll do while I'm on my little break. All the yarn in that case right there, is it called a case, whatever it is, cubicle, cubby, cubbies? Did you guys have cubbies in kindergarten? I remember it was a big deal to go find your cubby in kindergarten. Anyway. That yarn is all slotted for something. This yarn, which I'm going to show you the mess, maybe. This is my stash. And that's it. I know that a lot of people have bigger stashes than that. I love my stash. I don't feel inadequate because I don't have a huge stash. I feel totally blessed by the yarn that I have. It's a totally manageable stash. I don't feel overwhelmed by it. Like I need to get stuff out of it. Um, I have yarn that I can pull for prizes. I have yarn that when I'm putting stuff together and it is just enough that when I do this and rearrange the stuff room and I get in like some organizing fit, it's sort of like I'm shopping my own stash because I don't look at it for a while, right? So then I get it out and like I reorganize everything. This is the first time I have ever organized stuffed, stuffed, stuff by color, K kinda, kinda, sorta. Like my sash isn't really big enough to organize that way, but eh, you guys don't care. Hold on, I over-organized myself. I couldn't find what I was looking for. Okay, so these are the two skeins. I mean, and you guys probably will not see these forever. It's one of those things where I have the idea and who knows when I'll actually start it. But I, I mean, there's something so vampy about this and also so wearable for my wardrobe. I, I, I wear a lot of black and I wear a lot of gray. It'll go with my coat, like, so meh, maybe. But I was thinking I have this. I don't like it. I don't like it. Too light. That's plucky. Oh, and that's sport. Any, well, I mean, you could still do sport. I mix my weights because I live dangerously. But this is my skein. Oh, this is my skein from my full skein, which is Philip. And many of you commented that this is from a movie. Crap. I have it on my list. It's on my watch list. This is from a movie. So cool. This was my full skein for my Halloween advent from Lamb Strings. I don't know if that advent is going to be enough because I can't be bothered to do the math. I also did not say that that is from the top down. If it isn't enough and I need to continue... I'm going to use this, but I could also use it for this or something like it, maybe just a black, but I'm thinking a two color shawl, three skein, two color shawl. I'll stop talking about it now because I'm probably, 
martini episode. I'm probably rambling. Probably rambling. I am rambling. I have not had a drink for over a week. And my last drink was like a couple beers. So martini episode, like, pff, you know what I'm saying? Oh, actually it's been, so this is a little rambling within the rambles. My cousins and I went to Chicago uh, a little over a week ago. And that's the last time I had a cocktail. And we saw the Lion King. It was so good, you guys. It was so good. I loved it. I could have watched it like immediately again. I could have rewatched the whole, like if they started it over from the beginning, I just could have rewatched it. There was so much stuff to see. I was, oh, it was so good. And it was my first ever show. I want to say Broadway show, but it's not Broadway because it's not at Broadway play. Like, what do you say? It was my first show off Broadway, like whatever stage production show it was the first one I've ever seen. And I loved it. That was enabling. Now we're on to Happy Mail. And I'm going to stick with woolen women's fibers. Women. Woolen women fibers. Right? Yes. Woolen women fibers. Okay. So I want to introduce you, obviously loosely, because I'm just talking about them, to woolen women fibers. The reason they're called that is because it is three ladies, a mom, Aggie, and twins, Sam or Samantha. I'm not positive what she goes by. I think on her U on YouTube they introduce her as Samantha and Andrea. I met them through the Floxy event, which is why I bought that yarn, this yarn, because I saw it and I immediately fell in love with it. They reached out and asked if I would like one of their boxes. Because I, I was new to them, I didn't know the gig, right? Here's the gig, you guys. Every month, they have a yarn box. And in the yarn box is something made, dyed by Andrea, a bag by Aggie the mom, and then stitch markers by Sam or Samantha. She is Sam's, hold on, Sam's tiny trinkets is her handle. So they put these things together. You have to follow their Instagram. It's so much fun. Because they show the yarn, the bag, and the stitch markers together. Everything has a theme and it all fits together. And every month is a different theme. I have not been paying attention long enough. I'll totally, I'm gonna now, but I haven't been paying attention long enough to know all the themes. She did mention in her letter that there's like outer space, something cozy, like a, like a campfire thing, a ski one, like every, and I, I'm a sucker for a theme, right? They send me this box and it sat here for a long time because I will tell you the happy mail and stuff that I've received, you know, I usually open it on the podcast, but because I knew I was crunched for time, I opened all this stuff ahead of time so that I could get my notes and everything done. And I wanted to know what I was talking about when I showed you guys this box. I'm so excited. When I opened this box, I, I just like stared at it for a minute because the little girl in me, there was something about it. The little girl in me was like, you know how when you get a present and it's just so much fun to open a box full of fun stuff? Like, that's what this was. So it comes like this. This card was on the top. Look at it. I am already in love. The sprinkles. I'm already in love. So in here is a note from... Okay, so she signed it, Sam. So I'm not positive what she wants to go by, Sam or Samantha, but she signed it Sam, so I'm going to call her Sam. She said, thank you for supporting her, Sam's Tiny Trinkets. Uh, she gave 10% off. There's a code. It says to check them out on Instagram. They do Instagram Lives. They have a YouTube. I'm going to link all this stuff below. They have a Patreon and Etsy their website, their podcast, it's all right here. And then this is the box, okay? So, ta-da, you have this postcard. Love is in the air. This is their February box. It actually started, and 
I feel terrible because it takes me so long to record shit, especially like right now because of all the things. This is still going to be for sale when I get this episode out. Uh, where are the dates? Hold on. The 22nd. So pre-orders are available until the 22nd. They actually started on the 25th of December and then they're shipped out on the 7th. But no worries because they have a new box every month. So you'll get to see this box and see if it's your jam or if you wanna wait till the next box. So this box is Love is in the Air and it says that there's a wool wash bar, a soy wax candle, or a lanolin lotion bar, and it gives you like the ingredients in there. And then it says all products and candles are handmade by them, and that you'll get two of those three things in each box. I did look at everything, but I didn't take everything totally out because I had to show you the cuteness of this box. How freaking cute is this? You guys. These are those candy hearts. Like the Necco wafers that some people don't like. But it has all these candies in here. And I'm just going to show you now that you've seen the awesomeness. So in this one, love is in the air. And this is their candle. And you guys, I, w I wish you could smell it. It's yummy. Then this is the lotion bar. So what, what do we have here? There's a wool wash, oh wait. There's a wool wash bar, a soy wax candle, or a lotion bar. I think this is the lotion bar. So in this one, you get the candle and the lotion bar. I'm pretty sure, hold on. Now I can open it because I've shown y'all. Oh no, I, no, this is the soap. This is the wool wash. It smells like roses. This is the soap bar. Sorry, I had, to, I had to touch it. Okay, then here's the yarn, which is very love is in the air, right? And this is called Love is in the Air. It's 8020 Merino Nylon, 400 yards. Then, oh my God, you guys, all the candies. How freaking cute is that? So you get this little leather. So like whatever you make with this, you can put the little leather tag on and it says handmade with love then there's a pin that says woolen women's fiber the candy which ditto eight after i recorded then here are sam's and i'm gonna i'm gonna take it out so you guys can see them these are sam's progress are they progress keeper yes they're progress keepers and i think andrea said in the note something about these hold on there it is. Oh, each month is a full immersive yarny experience. I love it. Okay, yes. So here are Sam's trinkets. Sam, Sam's tiny trinkets, progress keepers. So this is a little hot air balloon, yeah? Yep. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, these are so cute. A hot air balloon and there's a little heart on the basket. And then you guys, this cloud is hand felted, hand needle felt, needle, hand needle. I don't know where that came from. Yes, I do. It's the martini. Hand needle felted by Sam. How freaking cute is that? And then Aggie, the mom, the mom, their mom. I, and I, this is so stupid also. I met them on Floxy. Well, they didn't meet me. I, I watched their video on Floxy because they have a Meet the Makers video sort of thing. And I thought they looked an awful lot alike. And I was like, I wonder who's like what the age, they're twins. <laughs> now it makes all the sense in the world. But Aggie is their mom and this is the bag. What's the inside look like? Inside's red. And... Her tat, that's substantial, man. Aww. So I'm gonna put the yarn in the bag. So cute. I love it so much. Ladies, thank you. And also, I forgot, in this month, for all new subscribers, 
they will gift you, is it du Ducathy? Ducathy? I'll have to look that up. I'll link it in the show notes. It's actually the Spread Your Love Mitts by Ducathy or Ducathy. I might still be saying that part wrong, but the name of the pattern is Spread Your Love Mitts and it's a $6.69 pattern if you want it yourself. For this box also, for new subscribers, they are gifting this pattern. And how cute is that? I wonder if the mini would be enough for the white. I bet it would. Don't you think it would? Thank you, ladies. I'm super psyched to check out your YouTube channel. And I'm so glad that Floxy brought us together. And I'm going to light this candle. I can't even say what it smells like. Good. That's what it smells like. It smells good. Hey, guys. So while I was editing, I sort of had an epiphany. I am going to give away the Woolen Women Fiber Box because I know that I won't get to it for quite some time to knit it. And I... I don't think that it should be sitting. I think somebody should be using it. So, uh, the only caveat with that is I opened the wool wash, of course. So, I have wrapped that in wax paper and put it in a Ziploc baggie. I've touched it. I don't know if anyone would be weird about that or not. And then you don't get the candle because I've been burning it. <laughs> and you don't get the candy because ditto ate it. We're going to go ahead and give that away. What should the prompt be? How about in the comments below, just type anything that has something that says candy hearts in it. And that's what I'll look for, candy hearts. So thanks, guys. My other advent that I was opening, actually, I'm going to get it because I didn't do it justice the last time. I was still opening fiber and things. I want to show it to you. How awesome is this, you guys? Okay. This was my other advent. If you are new here, I talked about it on the last episode. I did a fiber advent. It's my first ever fiber advent. And this is from On a Quest for Fiber. This is my hand spun. There's actually some little nubbins down here that didn't fit on here. My basket of hand spun. Here's my Nasta pin, which is from Fox and Sheep. I believe it's Fox and Sheep. And you guys, it's hand, I mean, it came from across the pond and it, I'll link her, but it is heirloom quality. I've talked about it before. And I love using it. I love any excuse to use it. Anyway, these are my little fiber nubbins. I don't know what you call them. Fiberlings. I am eventually going to uh, take lessons from her. This on a quest for fiber. How many times have I said that? A few. I think. <laughs> I think I might have said it a few. Anywho, this advent was twelve days of Christmas. And I am eventually going to take a supported spindle class from her. And until I have time, which now will not be for months, but until I have time to do that, this is where they're going to live. They are on knitting needles. And I actually put, look, I put clothespins on them. So 12 day, oh, that's not visually aesthetic, is it? There. She also sent a four ounce braid that I opened on Christmas day. Let me go put this back so I can show that to you. The four ounce braid she sent me on Christmas. Or I opened on Christmas, she didn't send it to me. Look at this. And this is Polworth. I love it, I love it. And I have a little basket, what I do with it. I'm actually going to put it in my little basket. This is what I want to spin. Do you guys remember these? Where did I get these? <laughs> That's terrible. Did I get these in? Oh, Yellow Springs. I got these in Yellow Springs. I've had them for a while. Tweed. And then this one is my Gritty Knits that I showed on the last podcast. And then I'm going to add this one to the mix. So I have a lot of things to spin but I really do enjoy spinning. Like even looking at this makes me want to spin. So 
You'll see that again. Had a pen, lost it. Oh, found it. I have a VKN. I do not have a VKN. I attend a VKN. It's not my VKN. <laughs> Uh, which VKN is a virtual knit night. And that's where a bunch of us, it happened over the pandemic and a bunch of us get together every Thursday and I suck at it because I'm always busy. But whenever I can, every Thursday we Zoom and knit and bullshit and talk about movies and boys and whatever we wanna talk about, right? Well, we did a skein exchange for Christmas and Jeff got my name and he sent me this skein. I mean, doesn't that remind, it reminds me of like Scooby-Doo, very 70s, totally my jam. And this is Nomadic Yarns and it is the, I've got a golden ticket. So it's Willy Wonka. So I kind of had the 70s down, right, right, right. And I'm guessing this is self-striping just by, the, it doesn't say self-striping, but just by the way it's gained, like that's self-striping, right? Hi, Bubba's, how are you? Are you wanting some love? Are you feeling unappreciated? Okay, so the next package is from Dawn. She sent me two books. This is the first one, Yarn Cocktails, which I have seen. Actually, I think at one point I might have had. I can't remember if I borrowed it or looked at it or maybe I got it from the library. I can't remember, but I know I've seen this book before. And everything is based on a drink, which how clever is that? And also how up my alley is that? Okay, so I'll show you obviously my favorite. This is the Dry Martini Belt. That's the Dry Martini Belt. There's classic cocktails, frozen drinks, champagne drinks, ooh. Tropical drinks, martini drinks, coffee drinks, garnish with a twist. Blue Knickers. Blue Knickers is a drink? I need to look this up. <laughs> They're the blue knickers, which I will not be knitting. But who else wants to know what a blue knickers drink is? Because I do. Blue knickers cocktail recipe. It's vodka, blue caraco, herbal liqueur, liqueur, liqueur. What's herbal liqueur? Apple juice and a dash of cream. That sounds dangerous in a whole bunch of ways. I am a little apprehensive with anything that, any alcoholic beverage that involves cream. But what is herbal liqueur? I must investigate. Herbal liqueurs are descendants of former cordials, medicinal plants, alcoholic extracts, or elixirs. Oh, right here, 14 herbal liqueurs. Can you tell us martinis work in? It's been a long week, people. Amaro, Anisette, I've heard of that. Anise, isn't that like licorice or something? Cream de menthe is considered an herb. This is all over the, I'm gonna have to do some investigating. Goldschlager, shut up. Circa 1997's calling my name. Goldschlager. These are all over the board. I mean, we have mint, we have cinnamon, we have Jägermeister, dude. Pause, we'll come back to that later. Anywho, so this is the first book, Yarn Cocktails. Everything I need to know, I learned from Betty White, baby. Betty White, you guys know I love the Golden Girls and the saying goes, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, that's bullshit. I've said it before. It's the greatest thing since Betty White because Betty White is older than sliced bread. I'm just saying. And it's in color. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you so much. Pam from Scow House Yarns. Here's her card. She is a retired nurse from Massachusetts and she started small batch indie dyeing a couple years ago and wanted to send us some yarn. So I'll give it for giveaways. She has an Etsy shop, go check her out. She sent, oh my gosh, it's blowing up so here. 
and there's speckles in there. And then this one, I feel like goes with it. This reminds me of like mint chocolate chip or something. So that would go awesome together. And this is fingering, yeah, sock weight, fingering. And then this is her Aran weight, which is so soft. And then she sent a little mini. Look how cute. I'll give some prizes. You guys know I have a prize bin. Go check her out, small batch. I love the small batchers. There's something special about, I'm the only person who has this, right? And that's kind of what these are. So when these go in a giveaway, these are like super special. Thank you, Pam, so much. This next Happy Mail is from Crystal from New Hampshire. And her daughter, Michaela, is an artist. And she, you guys, first let me show you Michaela's card. Now, it just says Michaela Rich, local artist, custom hand-drawn portraits, and then her Gmail address. So I'm guessing she does not have a website. I will include it if I find one, but I, when I got this, I looked and couldn't find one. I think she is just email. Her mom is Crystal, and she said, as soon as she finished this, I knew I had to send you a print. So you guys know that I love Labyrinth, obviously, right? I love Labyrinth. I will be honest with you, it has turned into a little bit of a frog thing for me. For you OGs, I talk about in high, or I have talked about in high school, I was into frogs. And then because I was into frogs, just everybody sent me frog stuff. And some of it was cool, but some of it was like, okay, well, I like frogs, but I'm not into like that kind of frogs. And that's sort of what Labyrinth has turned into. Everyone knows that I love it. There are some things that are, you know, like, oh, that's cool, but, right? This is freaking amazing. Have you ever, I mean, I was speechless when I opened it. I mean, I just stared at it with my mouth hanging open for a while. It's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. So if you need a portrait done, or maybe if you want a print of this, or something of the like, definitely get a hold of her. Crystal, thank you so much. Michaela, you are awesome. I am going, actually, I, I was thinking about framing this, but then when I rearranged the stuff room, right there, baby. Do you guys remember that putty stuff that you could like put post, rude? That like putty stuff that you could put posters up with when you're in high school so you didn't put like holes in your wall. I think I'm going to do that. I don't, I don't want, I don't think I want to frame it. Not yet. Maybe I will someday, but not yet. I think I'm going to put it right there. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. People's talent floors me because you know we all have different sorts of talents and you know I'm like good at some stuff like I can knit you guys can knit you know I can't do anything near that cool ever in my life like that is a talent that surpassed me I got a box from Tania Tania is a breakfast club podcast she's my friend you guys remember the hug the hug from Ryan Beck. I freaking love her so much. She lives in Texas and I sent her a Christmas box with some beer and stuff. We like, we like our spirits. And she sent me one, which is not at all what I meant to happen, but it did. So let me show you what she sent me. I was going to start the episode out by chugging one of these, which I will at some point in time. But I just opened this last night, and like I said, I haven't had a cocktail in a while, and I was craving a dirty martini, and to chug one of these would not have gone well with a martini. 
So she sent me the airplane bottles, right? So this is Western Sun and it's in lemon and raspberry. And is this all Texas? This is all Texas. And then this is Deep Eddy in the ruby red grapefruit and orange. So all this distilled in Texas. Then she sent me fiber. This is Unwind Yarn Company. And this is Morning Surf. Morning Surf and it's Swirl BFL. Then Savvy Skeins, those colors are great. And that is Mandarin Dragonette. Does that say Dragonette? I feel like maybe it does. She sent me a mini, which how cool is this label? From Leon Alexander Yarns. How neat is that logo? And this is the mini. Sent me a coaster, a slate coaster. I don't know if this will make it to another episode because like I said, it's going to be a while before I record again, but she sent me a six pack of Texas beer. So we have Evil Catfish IPA, Hat Tip Texas Wheat, Tipsy Vicar, which is a stout. I'm not really a stout girl. I'll probably give that to my brother-in-law, but I'll try it. We have 784 is that right? Oh no, that's Barrow Barrow. Barrow, eh. 784 White Ale. Big Bubbly Blonde. I love that so much. That's mine, all the way. And Mystery of the Deep Double IPA. And those are all, wait, are they all Barrow? Oh, they're all Barrow. These are all from the same brewery. Barrow, where in Texas then? Salado. Salado? Salado or Salado? Thank you, Tania. Okay, then this is my last, I'm calling this Happy Mail, but really I got it for Christmas from my dad and Mama Jean. And you know, like Mama Jean, like, come on, like she knows me, right? First, look at this. It is a notebook and the pages are like that. You can't really tell there. It's like that craft brown paper and it has like a zipper pocket and stuff. Dan tried to steal it and I was like, no, Mama Jean got it for me. This, you guys, I'm so excited. I don't know where I'm gonna put it. It's a calendar. It has the moon phases on it. Dude, this is a Monday to Sunday. Those always throw me. Do they throw you guys? Hey, hold on, let me show you some of my favorites in here. April, look at April with the moth and the pine cone. June, that is so freaking beautiful with the Queen Anne's lace. August is one of my faves. I mean, look at that cute little fuzzy bee. And then of course, you know I love October. Then the last thing I'm gonna show you for my dad, Mama Jean, this is in our stocking. Where did she find that? Where did she find that? It's gonna go right here on my windowsill. And that's it, that's it for all the stuffs. So now the miscellaneous and why I am going to be MIA for a little bit, I needed to give myself an out because I have been so swamped and I've wanted to record and wanted to record and wanted to record and have no time to do it. So as many of you know, I work at a funeral home and the first quarter of the year is always the busiest. So we are swamped at work. Then on top of that, because I am absolutely crazy, my boss is a playwright. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that before. His new play is called The Sexton. It is being put on stage. There are going to be eight shows at the beginning of March and I am acting in it. I have never acted a day in my life. <laughs> Not even elementary. There's never been a time where I could have been in a play. I've always wanted to act, but there's never been a time I went to a very small school. They put on a play every year. It was like in order to be in the play, you had to be in chorus. And I was not a singer. This just worked out. 
and it's the only time in my life that it will probably ever come to fruition and we started play practice at the beginning of the week and for the next three months it's going to basically rule my world i'm super excited about it the play is called the sexton there's a facebook page for it i'll link it below so you can look at it it is about a cemetery that has a new sexton and there's a section a sexton is a person who takes care of a cemetery for those of you who don't know there is a section 13 who are the single graves and they are ghosts who haven't crossed over and the cemetery has hired a new sexton and that sexton can see ghosts the sexton is going to help those ghosts figure out why they're still here and why they haven't crossed over. But in the meantime, the gal who runs the cemetery is a real estate agent and she is going to basically develop the cemetery into condos and has gotten a French Canadian investor and they're exhuming the cemetery and going to move it. So in the play, Wally is the main character. He's the sexton. He is going to help these ghosts move on as well as stop Karen, who is the real estate agent, who is a promiscuous bitch. He's going to stop her from, or try to stop her from moving the cemetery and developing it into condos. And your girl Chevis is Karen. <laughs> like I said, I've never acted before. I'm having a blast. I'm super scared about memorizing the lines, but I think it'll be fine. Um, so like send your vibes out into the universe for me and I will see you when I see you. This is not goodbye. This is just like a end of a season and I'll be back later. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for always hanging out with me and commenting. If you are a winner of a prize, get a hold of me. And until next time, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that happy horse shit. I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>